there was a lot of excitement around that game. You know, that was at a, at a point when the Auburn and LSU played early in the year. It seemed like every year. And so being around the stadium, there's just a tremendous buzz around the stadium that night. We only had two stations back then. We were on shift out there that day. We only had really two people that would stay at the stadium. And we heard some commotion going on and we we're like, what's, you know, what's, what's all that? And then the tones went off for a structure fire right beside the stadium. This fire has broken behind the stadium. That is the southeast corner of the stadium. And hopefully they're getting water on that. But we can't tell if it is a building next to the stadium. Hopefully it is not a part of the stadium. When you see smoke like that, uh, and then you pull up and there's that much fire, uh, it's uh, a lot of excitement. One of the battalion chiefs, he opens these two big double doors and it was like an inferno. And it was just, the fire was just circling. You have these flames shooting hundreds of feet in the air. It's higher than the upper deck on the other side of the field. And so it went very quickly to, oh my goodness, how bad is this fire gonna get? That's the most terrified I've ever been in a stadium because you just don't expect to see that kind of a fire so close to you and 80,000 other people. It is the old students activity building. It is next door to the stadium. We, we knew about the building. You know, we knew that it was an old heart pine gymnasium. We knew that if, if something was to occur there, it could be significant. It was actually scheduled for demolition. That juxtaposition of a huge fire feet from a stadium occupied by 85,000 people and the game seemingly continuing on as if you know, it was a normal thing. The wind direction moving the smoke completely away from the stadium. It was like it was blowing the perfect direction. Had that wind changed direction, shifted anything, it, it could have been a lot more serious a situation. Because of how much water we were having to use on that fire, our supply line from the fire hydrant started to cavitate, meaning we were losing water pressure. So we started having to shut lines down. We were flushing all the water from the stadium also. It's all going on the fire. So anywhere else, any other buildings that would have water, you know, they didn't have it. I can remember several times just turning and looking and just seeing all the people, and it was just like silhouettes of people just standing there watching. I, I think things would have been amped up significantly had they pulled all the players off the field and evacuated, then the fans would have started to evacuate. And so I know that had to have been a really you know, difficult decision to make even in the, the first parts of it. It was still burning for a while, but as far as the major part of the fire, yeah, we got it under control maybe, maybe an hour, but we were there all night. I can remember laying in the middle of that street with my head on five inch hose trying to take a nap in the middle of the night. What we discovered was some of the tailgaters that were barbecuing had their grill underneath the overhang of the, of the arena there. After they finished grilling, they just kind of pushed it too close to the arena. That's ended up being enough of a ignition source to, to ignite the, the building on fire. The fire really became a, a star for ESPN that night because it was such a truly unique experience. The fire became the story. It became the memory for that game. As far as my career here in the past 21, 22 years, that's been the biggest fire that, uh, that I've been a part of.